Welcome to TV Burr, the show that boils down the week's TV into a rich stock and then pours it over your eyes and ears. <laughs> and, of course, this week saw the announcement live on TV of the winner of the Turner Prize. I think we'll have uh, that one. <laughs> <sighs> and concern grows over Charlotte Church's behaviour. I don't know about you, but that's kind of weird behaviour for a 17-year-old, you know? <laughs> sing something we know, love, all right? Sing something we know. <laughs> oh, I must just, uh, while I'm thinking about it... Uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, hello, hello, Charlotte. Yeah, it's Harry. Yeah, listen, love, you still all right for that meet and greet later? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, keep your hair on. <laughs> oh, and as BBC One's Fame Academy draws to a close, anticipation reaches fever pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and despite fears that going five nights a week would stretch their ability to come up with exciting new storylines, Emmerdale goes from strength to strength. Edna tells me you're having a shed delivered. <laughs> Oh. Eat your heart out, EastEnders. <laughs> Who needs a murder when you're getting a shed delivered? <laughs> on The Real Princess Anne on Channel 4, Prince Philip defends his role as president of the World Wildlife Fund. There was a time when you, I think, went on tiger shoots, presumably those no, days. I never went on tiger shoots. I went on one shoot. <laughs> Not a thing I shot it. one tiger that happened to be lame at the time. <laughs> Imagine you were not even born then, anyway, so I don't know about it. Oh, I don't know, you shoot one tiger and everyone's on your back, aren't they? <laughs> it was lame anyway, you know. <laughs> That's the usual treatment for lameness, death, right? <laughs> Ask Truder off vets in practice. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's lame and so we've got to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> History now with BBC's Time Flyers. What I love about history programmes is the way you can learn so much. What are these massive timbers doing in the riverbank? Well, to be honest, we're not entirely sure. I mean, it's obviously some sort of riverside structure. <laughs> <sighs> it's a riverside structure. Running across the bottom yeah. of the trench, and you can see it in the other section as well. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think that this might be a big ditch? <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot for that one, yeah. I got my history mocks this week. What's this? It's a man in a hat. What's this? A bit of cloth with some marks on it. What's this? It's a library. Get down there and look stuff up like you're supposed to. See, I've got a contact on Time Team who gets me loads of fossils and bits of flint. Yeah, and I collect them. But don't be fooled by the rocks that I've got. I'm still, I'm still Harry from the block. <laughs> Jamie Oliver's back. Oh, yeah. Jamie's back with Jamie's Kitchen, where he's teaching people off the street how to cook. And we see a slightly more grumpy side to Jamie. Right, on paper, you have turned up to Hammersmith 66%. Right, and I just think that is completely taking the piss. That is taking the piss out of me, because I've put my bollocks on the line for this thing. <laughs> He, keep, he keeps saying about how he's risking all his money on the project. Well, you know, what have you spent it all on, Jamie? Coriander. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually got the menu for the new restaurant. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, what's on the menu? Uh, boiled egg, runny or hard. Uh, <laughs> it's not a choice, it's what you get, right? Might be runny, <laughs> might be hard. Uh, oven chips with a nice dollop of salad there. Uh, then for afters, uh, tin peaches with a little bit of, a little bit of tip top, a little bit of tip top on top. Uh, washed down with a nice big mug of Sunny D. Yeah. <laughs> It's sort of a, a can't cook, can't cook. <laughs> the judges, they work five days a week. That's one day judging, four days off with diarrhoea. <laughs> Isn't it funny how people end up looking like they're ornaments, though, eh? What time did you get in this morning? I don't know, it's been like two, I think. And another thing, 15 to 1 on Channel 4. 15 to 1, it's on at 3.45. <laughs> It should be 15 to 4. <laughs> Get it right! <laughs> Emmerdale now, and someone's been vandalising Ray Mullen's car. Yeah, Mr Big I Am on the one side, but it continues round. Look, it says, uh, Mr Big I Am, putate your legs if you carry on being naughty. <laughs> 
Staying with Emmerdale, Emily and Paddy are fostering two young girls, girls with problems, as their social worker explains. Carly, the younger girl, is much more approachable. Chantal isn't. She can be extremely manipulative. And she's prone to tantrums. Yeah, well, first job, put them knives away. Get rid of the knives. <laughs> you know. What you need is a shed. You need a shed, mate. <laughs> Don't you hate it when someone's talking to you and a little bit of food finds its way out of their mouth into your face? How long have you been here? Long enough. I wouldn't suppose there's many's accepted you yet. <laughs> ah, Emmerdale. The big story, of course, is still the stalker. <coughs> yeah, he still managed to evade capture despite there being only about 12 people who live in Emmerdale. <laughs> But Paul Louise is living in fear. I hear the police were around at your place last night. Don't miss much, do you? They're investigating your mystery admirer. He's there, Louise. Look, his big eyes <laughs> looking at you, <laughs> mentally undressing you. <laughs> you know, I got so upset about Paul Louise, I could almost do this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This. He wouldn't do anything to hurt you. That's what I keep telling myself. He was upset, though. Enough to do this? <laughs> These two blokes, Trini and Susanna, who tell you that you look terrible <laughs> and then chuck your clothes out. You know, what's all that about? Teamed with the trousers. You look like a hooker. <laughs> you do. You look like a hunchback. <laughs> Yeah, they've sold the format of that show all around the world. Yeah. Have a look at the Taliban version of what not to wear. Hey, <laughs> 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 well, Bond's back. Yes, sparking a spate of Bond-based shows. Here's Channel 5's The Real Bond Gadgets. The rat was provided, and someone had the gruesome task of emptying it out, so you had a hollow rat skin. <laughs> that was then filled with plastic explosive <laughs> and into the plastic explosive a time pencil with a small primer at the end was inserted and the rat would explode. Right, you take your rat, right, you scoop out all the inside like that, you get your car with explosives, you pop that in there like that, then you get your, your time pencil, you put your time pencil in there like that. Oh, my God, no! Did I say great hit and chop it out like that? No, it's right. It's like a... The thing is, I've got more bollocks from the night, eh? If you wanted to put a thing through that, Bert, you know, I'll be absolutely brave. Forget your main course. Forget your main... We'll go on the pudding. Get your puddings up. All right, here we go with the pudding. What you do? Right here. You peel the top off your screen. Right there. You just peel it off. What the point? <laughs> Jamie's kitchen has come to an end, but I'm pleased to say his trainees have all secured jobs in the catering business. <laughs> I don't know if you're like me, but I love Holby City. <laughs> I like nothing more than sitting down in front of Holby with a takeaway foreign meal and letting the fun commence. I don't want to let it go. Yes, we're close. We've even talked about getting married. Cut. No. Hey, come on. <laughs> That's not fair. I've got terminal cancer. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll have that tomorrow, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know about you, but these operations, to me, they look like someone's cutting into a beige PVC sofa. We should really get her into the theatre now. No, we've no time for that. Just open her up here. Ed, do it. <laughs> Night. <laughs> Harry, terrible news. Terrible news? It's the sofa. Not my beige PVC one. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting on it. 
having my tea, and the bottle of tomato sauce fell down the back. It's got stuck. I need the sauce, and the thing is, my chips are getting cold. Well, there's nothing for it. I'd better get it down to Holby. <laughs> Sure What's the story? Well, the floor manager's sitting on it, eating his chips. Got the sauce falls down the back of it. And the chips? That's just it. They're getting cold. <laughs> Can I help you? Carrie, it's urgent. Injured sulfur. Sauce bottle. Yep, and the chips are getting cold. Any sausage? <laughs> uh, no, just, just chips. <laughs> on my count. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, Mr. Taylor. What's the story here? Five-year-old sofa, bottle of tomato ketchup falling down the back of it. And the chips? Getting, Getting cold. cold. <laughs> Set up a drip. I'll see what I can feel. We'll be all right, Doctor, won't it? That's <laughs> more now, Esther. What are you doing on my wire? <laughs> Mr. Campbell Gore, I was just passing. Well, what's the deal here? A uh, five-year-old sofa, sauce bottle down the back of it. Oh, nasty. Tell me, have you looked inside the cushions? Sometimes they can get trapped there. <laughs> oh, we better get it down to the theatre. Uh, I'll throw a little leak here. I'm gonna zip. It's down and zip stuck. Where's well, the stopping? Well, well, there's nothing for it. We'll have to go in. Alistair, give me a hand, will you? Uh, scalpel. <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Kerry, uh, Kerry, my, uh, would you? Oh. <laughs> Just a bit, feel the tip of it. Squeeze it, squeeze it, you, quick suction. There. Oh, I've got it. Look at it. Right. Alistair, would you close for me, please? It's in the air. What? Clear. Two hundred jewels. Clear. Oh. No. Okay, we we'll go again. Clear. No. Okay, adrenaline. Quick in there. How we doing? Nothing. I think we should call it a day. I mean, we got the sauce out and everything. Yeah, what I suppose. <laughs> Time of death. Wait a minute. What about my sofa? Yeah, he's right. It, there's a big cut there, and it's all stained with ketchup. Yeah, yeah, but you, you, you just, uh, just turn the cushion over. Yeah, or, or you can put a blanket over it. Or a throw. Yeah. Someone's going to have to tell the relatives. Well, I'd better do that. Where are they? In the waiting room. <laughs> Mrs. Parker, no. <laughs> I'm afraid the doctors did all they could, but... From now on, there is a strong chance that your husband may have to wear a stretch cover. <laughs> <sighs> that was a close one. <laughs> well, a number of our highly revered celebrities are prone to the odd temper tantrum, but who's the most effective, Charlotte Church or Liam Gallagher? <laughs> Fight! <laughs> And on the bill this week, Angus Dayton's partner finally broke her silence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did enjoy seven days at Shook Coronation Street on Sunday, which, amongst other things, detailed the various problems of Bet Lynch. <laughs> of course, when I say Bet Lynch, I don't mean Bet Lynch, I mean the actress who played Bet Lynch, uh, Julie, uh, Julie, uh... Good year! Not bad, looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> Seven days, the Shook Coronation Street. They copied our idea. Yeah, they had a fight between Corrie and EastEnders. And then the rating for EastEnders went up and up and up, and suddenly they realised that they had a fight on their hands. <laughs> they copied 
stupid our idea. We do the fights. <laughs> In that bit, EastEnders won, but they didn't show what happened after the cameras stopped rolling. <laughs> Yeah, like I say, we do the fights. <laughs> Anne's in deck now. Is it me or when deck is talking, does Anne just kind of stare at you? Ever wondered what's going through his head? It might even be fair to say that one or two people haven't been getting on so well. I hadn't noticed myself, but yesterday there was a I wonder what my mum's cooked for me light. tea. <laughs> I hope it's not a quiche again. As nice as they are, I find the pastry tends to get a bit soggy. <laughs> Robot Wars now on BBC Two, and like me, you were bowled over by Chaos Two beating Dan Tomkia. <laughs> Great results, but what were its tactics? What was the tactic when you were sort of uh, approaching the battle? I had, I had two choices: I pack and stack, which is what I used. Mm -hmm. well, John, uh, George gave me his rear end. I was going to lift my forks up and go through his back and take his tip and turn his out. <laughs> Explain that again. Pack and stack, which is what I use. Mm -hmm. Well, John, uh, George gave me his rear end. I was going to lift my forks up and go through his back and take his internals out. No wonder every now and then Craig Charles comes over a bit Anton Deck. Chaos 2. All the experience of former champions. We've already seen the flippability, <laughs> iron ore beating. I wonder what me mam's cooked for. <laughs> I hope it's not a quiche again. As nice as they are, I find the pastry tends to get a bit soggy. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. TV highlight of the week. The Bill with their very own cop idol. And a special <laughs> message for the victims of the Sun Hill serial killer. again well or at least arrange the bit so you kind of sort of look like you're whole again you know what, I mean? <laughs> what is it with Bruce Forsyth and those big playing cards though eh hmm? if you're having difficulty seeing get glasses Bruce all right don't just have everything made big <laughs> battle stations radar on channel 4 last week explained about a special competition they announced back in 1945 the Air Ministry offered a prize of £1,000 to anyone who could build a death ray that could kill a sheep at 100 yards. <laughs> a death ray that could kill a sheep at 100 yards. Well, here's the original advert uh, in the Radio Times, look. Uh, <laughs> Pete Waterman on the front. Where's the advert? Oh, here it is, yeah. Could you create a death ray that could kill a sheep at 100 yards? Prize, £1,000. Oh, just imagine what I could do with a thousand pounds. Oh, what's this? Closing date, Saturday, 14th of December, 2002. <laughs> Wait a minute, if I could... I've got an idea, if we could just... <laughs> Cheers, Brucey. Nice to see you. Best of luck. <laughs> die! Die, damn you, die! Oh, it worked with the end. Oh, that someone come out. <laughs> now, the great reality TV swindle on Channel 4, in which 30 grown men and women gave up their jobs and homes for a year to be in a reality TV show that doesn't exist. Why you do that? <laughs> to be honest, the money is <laughs> just the money. <laughs> and the fact that it may have opened other windows yeah. Well, I think you mean doors. I think you mean doors. Yeah. The windows are the things that you throw yourself out of. Right. Here's the big plan. We're going to be back here next year with £1 million. Pounds. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, if you raise a million pounds in a year, you win a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> Have a look at the bloke who was supposed to direct it. And I just sort of thought, well, can't we just sort of, like, tell everybody the truth? We're trying to make a programme, we don't have a commission, and if we all pull together, it might work. Would you give up your job and home for a man who puts his TV on his armchair? <laughs> <laughs> the reason he's got it there is because he's his only friend. 
<laughs> now, I felt sorry for some of them, though, particularly poor Debbie. At the end of it all, she had to go home and live with a long-suffering teddy bear. In my mind, I'd gone I away... I wonder what me mum's um, cooked for me tea. <laughs> I hope it's not quiche again, as nice as they are. I find the pastry tends to get a bit soggy. There's one window open, eh? No. Now, the BBC won't let us have clips of EastEnders. No. No. Yeah, Greg Dyke's the ringleader. Oh. Yeah. Who'll ride with me and punish him? All right, we can't get clips, but we still want you to know what's going on in it. So this week, we've got the Shanklin Town Women's Guild Choir to explain <laughs> roughly what's been going on in EastEnders over the last week or so. Jim Brown, and yes, that lady was trying to get off with him at the gym, then he was taken ill. Doctor, doctor was called. Doctor, how many drugs he had? Yeah. It's almost like watching, isn't it? <laughs> the Shanklin Towns Women's Guild Choir there. <laughs> and, uh, well, let's just have a look at a few of the, the Christmas cards I've received. Look, there's uh, one from, uh, from Pete Waterman. Uh, <laughs> with Jesus, from when they, were, when they were knocking about together. Uh, it's, it's written uh, with a quill. It's written with a quill, that one. Uh, this one from... Uh, Ooh, the f Ugh. I, I can't read that one out. That's, uh, that's from Charlotte Church. <laughs> Ooh, what a Christmas as well. Uh, oh, is it, this one here, look, this, oh, it's a big one. That's, uh, that's from uh, Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> that's from Bruce Lee. And uh, this last one here, that's from, uh, that's from Stephen off EastEnders. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, to sing us out, ladies and gentlemen, it's Atomic Kitten. Laughing and joking, doing what I can. I won't put you down. I want you around. You can make me whole again. Comedy continues next, 15 minutes later than build. Frank Skinner is joined by stars of the big and small screen, Jack Ryder, Carol Vorderman and Chicago stars Rennie Zellweger and Richard Gere. They're all up next.